I'm James Wilkinson. I've been a travel editor for over 20 years. On this show, we're going to take you to some of the world's most amazing places. We're going to show you some of the world's best hotels, bars, restaurants, galleries, and much more. Today, we're in New York City. We're here at the luxurious Conrad, New York, downtown. We're here with Robert Rechterman, the general manager. And Robert, we're in a really beautiful hotel here. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you here. And it's been around, we're saying, for about four years now? We've been open about four and a half years now here in Lower Manhattan. What are some of your highlights of this property? You know, we're an all-suite property. We've got 463 suites overlooking, some of them overlooking the Hudson with views of the city. Um, we've got a tremendous amount of meeting space, so we're very good for groups and social functions. Wonderful service to the Conrad brand. I think most importantly right now, the story is really what's happening to Lower Manhattan and how we fit into that. Lower Manhattan has evolved tremendously in the last five years with the development of the World Trade Center, the Oculus, Brookfield, Westfield, so there's fantastic shopping down here. There's, there's a leisure component, there's residential steps to Tribeca. So it's, it's really, as opposed to being what was known as the financial district, now it's really just part of Manhattan. The location here in Lower Manhattan is, is just phenomenal right now, and I think it's, it's so up and coming, as opposed to staying in Times Square, which is you know, a little bit tight yeah. and compact right now. And uh, very contemporary rooms, obviously well suited to both business travelers and leisure yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah, we've really designed the room uh, to be very comfortable for both. Um, you've got a lot of space, you've got 430 square feet minimum, which is huge for New York standards. It's a very comfortable, livable, you know, almost residential feeling room, and, and people really do love it. With great options for families, we've got pull-out sofas. It's a suite, which again, for the value in New York, you just don't see anywhere else. You're kind of in a good space from a price point. We, we like well. to think so. We're, we're a good value. Our Waldorf brand, of course, is meant to be our five-star brand, and Conrad sort of sneaks in just below that. It's a market that is up and coming. People enjoy that. They enjoy a, a different type of luxury, maybe a little bit less ostentatious, but more comfortable, more technology, or what have you. And, and again, I think our product from a room's perspective and everything that we offer is, is so unique. And very art-driven hotel. We've got a very, yeah. very unique artwork right smack bang in the middle Our loopy doopy here is the centerpiece of our lobby. and We've got well over two or three thousand pieces of artwork throughout the hotel and, and through the room. So you know, visually, it's very appealing to a lot of people as well. Thank you so much for having us today. Yeah, no, thank you. It's a pleasure. We're down here in Lower Manhattan on the west side, which is home to the High Line. It's a 1.45 mile long disused elevated railway line. It's been turned into a whole bunch of gardens and parks and trails. And you can literally walk from Whitney Museum, we're going to go into shortly. It's right up to sort of the Chelsea markets and a bit further up. It's a great little walk. Definitely try and get here during the week, although on weekends, it gets way too busy. Well, the Whitney Museum of American Art is firmly one of the hottest museums in New York right now, alongside you know, the Guggenheim, the Met, MoMA, all those classic institutions that travelers go to. But down here in the Meatpacking District, you'll find a collection of portraits and objects, and it's one of the best collections you'll find anywhere in New York. Just not on display. So we actually have a 
and here you'll find about five floors of galleries, about 400 works at any point in time. But keep in mind the collection is about 22,000 deep, so there's going to be no shortage of that going forward in the future. So every time you come back here, like I do quite often, you're going to find something new, something different, something exciting. Spend a few hours here, then go downstairs and have lunch at Untitled, one of the best restaurants actually down here in the meatpacking district. For the past 20 years, uh, Lee Abermonte has been professionally traveling the world, having been to all 193 countries and the youngest American to do it. Lee's here with me today, and Lee, uh, mate, that's quite an epic adventure around the world. Why did you decide to go and visit every country? Well, it was just a hobby when I started, and then I just kind of fell in love with travel and culture and seeing new things, meeting new people, and kind of living out this awesome lifestyle, as you know very well. And uh, it's one point I was at over 100 countries that I'd already visited, and I got an email saying there was this record to be the youngest to go to every country. And I kind of took a little inventory of time and money, and then I decided to go for it. Now, what are some of the top tips that you have for, for business travelers or even leisure travelers for that aspect who, who kind of travel a lot? Well, when it, first thing I do generally when I get on a plane is just kind of put your mind blank. I just kind of accept my fate that I'm going to be on an airplane for 10 to 15 hours, whatever it might be, and then just go with it from there. That's step number one is being in the mental mindset to travel the way that we travel. And also looking for deals. I, I've kind of perfected the art of looking for deals and not going too crazy about it. So just if you're going to book the flight, do it and do it early because then you get the best seat selection. And as you know, that could be some of the most important decisions that you make when you travel. Fantastic. And we've asked Lee to take us around one of his favorite parts of New York here. And uh, that is finding some of the best pizza in New York. We're here in, uh, in the West Village of New York. Lee, what's our first stop? Joe's Pizza, uh, the quintessential New York street slice. I've literally eaten here 3,500 times at least. Uh, now there's a second one actually, 14th and 3rd, but this is the original. Actually, the original was on the corner over there, which is now a uh, Grom uh, Italian gelato place. And uh, they kind of strong armed the owner a few years ago, probably about 10 years ago, and then it had to move down. This used to be only the takeaway and delivery, but now it's like the, the home base if you will, for Joe's Pizza, and it is awesome. Looks like we're going to be ordering a slice of pizza. <laughs> There's always a line here, so you got to have some patience when you come to Joe's, especially late at night when all the drunk people are here. <laughs> This is how New Yorkers eat pizza, by the way. We fold in the middle, crease. It's still as good as the 3,499th time ago that I was here. <laughs> is it hard to find, like, by the slice here in New York? No, it's easy, it's easy to find by the slice, but it's, it's hard to find an awesome slice. I mean, a lot of, you know, it's like um, pizza's like sex, even if it's bad, still pretty good. But uh, the slices here, there's great slices and then there's okay slices and then there's like, you know, the ones that uh, they sell in like Times Square that are just yeah. utter crap, you know? Two is Keste. Keste is actually a recent addition to the West Village pizza scene, and for me, it's probably the actual best pizza in New York City. It's one of those Neapolitan style pizzas. You've been to Naples and Italy and Napoli, and you know how good that is, and they brought that from the streets of Naples 
to here in New York and this place is just awesome and it really took off. New York Magazine actually called it the top pizza in New York and uh, that's what made me come here originally yeah. and uh, I can actually for once say that I agree with uh, popular media and uh, it really is just fantastic. We'll go inside and take a look. All right. Thanks, man. Hi, guys. Welcome. Good, thank you. What's the order here? What, what, what do people want to eat when they come in? Well, here at Caste, everything's good. I mean, I mean that honestly. Everything is fantastic. But the, the go-to for me is the Pizza Del Rey. It's a uh, Neapolitan-style pizza. It's about, you know, 10, 12 inches thick. And it's just pure deliciousness with uh, some Parma ham, some truffle cream, mushrooms, and uh, beautiful mozzarella cheese. It is as good as it gets, and they serve it perfectly with this fluffy crust. It's straight off the streets of Napoli, right here in New York. All right, so, uh, mate, we're at our third stop on, on your fantastic pizza tour of the West Village. Where are we now? We are at John's Pizzeria. Now, John's has been here for a long time, like way before I've moved here, and it doesn't do slices, so you have to actually sit down or take away, uh, but it is fantastic. Everything is good. It's just old-fashioned pies, so, you know, cheese, but the sausage here, for me, is as good as it gets. Let's go and try it out. All right, man. Saying, you know, you, you have to go the meat, to the sausage. Yeah, I mean, everything's good here. The pepperoni, the meatball, the cheese is all good, but the move here is the ground sausage. Uh, it's fantastic. I'm telling you, it's the best in the city. No knives and forks here, right? <laughs> you can use knives and forks, but you won't see me doing that. Really? You just gotta pick it up and go. Now again, there's no slices here, so this is the only way to do these pizzas here. Ready? Take it. Go for it. Too good. Right? Yeah, it's good as not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, there you have it, a, a tour of three of the best pizza places in West Village with the one and only Lee Abermonte. Lee, thank you for taking us around. Thanks, man. Anytime. Really enjoyed it. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, mate, uh, I think we've worked up a uh, drink now. What do you think? Should we go and grab a beer? <laughs> Is it Bluebird Blue? Sounds good. Let's go. All right, let's do it. Coming up on the next episode of Wayfarer, we're in one of the real hidden gems here, uh, which is the Walker Hotel in Greenwich Village. It's a personalized experience. It's your hotel. And really, that's what our focus is going to be. One of the great things to do in New York is a, a helicopter ride over Manhattan. And we're going to take a journey now with the team from Heli NY. We're here at the Quinn Hotel, a luxury hotel up on 57th Street and 6th Avenue in the heart of Midtown New York. This is the hotel's penthouse. Goes for a cool 15 grand a night. 